Hi, I'm Charles. I own and direct Kaleidoscope School of Music in the Seattle area, and I've been making videos all day, but this is my last uh, kind of informal fun video of the day, where I'm going to introduce to you uh, one of my good friends here, the Hello Kitty guitar. It's been a while now, I think maybe about five or six years ago, I started looking for one of these. I had a student who took lessons who had the three-quarter size black one. Um, when she stopped playing guitar, I tried to buy it off for her. Dad's like, no, I like, I like playing that guitar, but hang on to it. So I started a quest on Craigslist to find my own. I wanted to get um, one that was local so I could play it out, try it out, play it, make sure I'm really happy with how it played. Um, it took about a year, but I found one here in uh, the town we're in, which is Issaquah, on Craigslist. And it was a lady who collected Hello Kitty stuff. She never even played it, I don't think. They still had the, uh, the vinyl on the face of the, of the kitty and on the, uh, the back. So it was like perfectly mid condition, and I bought it. It's brand is a Squire, but it was made by a uh, Squire Strat, but it was made by Fender. Um, this one's Indonesian made, uh, probably made about 10 years ago, maybe maybe more than that now. I took it to my loop here, just to see. You know, not that I hated it or anything because I bought it, but uh, he hand wired whatever you do with pickups. This particular pickup in white to match. I tend to buy either white or pink uh, DR neon strings, gauge 10 through 46 to put on it. Um, he did some other fret work that kind of made it a little bit smoother. Um, and you know, it's a simple guitar. It's got one volume knob, but it's been a favorite with students. Um, initially, I thought this is probably kind of stereotypical king. I thought that girls might like it. But what I found is actually a lot of the king guys like playing it at shows, uh, probably for the irony factor, I don't know. For a while, I was using it as my um, drop E flat guitar for Guns N' Roses with a cover band I was playing with. I thought there was something really funny about playing Welcome to the Jungle on this guitar. The pickup's in it. It's pretty hot, pretty raspy. I like it better than the stock one, but let's see what it sounds like here. Uh, this is the my Mesa Boogie Road King, and this is the uh, Channel 3 kind of rock setting I use for most of my guitars. So this guitar crew, it sounds like this. <laughs> So this is, does tend to be a noisy game. Kicking into my metal, modern metal setting here. Cleaner, because I call this my blues channel, it's four channel amp. And a little more volume on that guy. Compared to my super shred channels. very playable. The raspy quality of it though that doesn't really make it good for like real subtle things. Like this is my uh, cleanest channel as I have it set up right now. Right now this is the clean on this three-way switch here. I've got the uh, fat. Definitely got me got for this guitar and I've got what uh, Mesa calls the tweed. I think for this guitar, probably just the straight clean settings best. Because it's the only hope you have of getting it actually kind of clean. Yeah, it's about as clean as I can get this guy. Maybe I should save this girl. Anyway, um, it's been real fun having this guitar though for the last five years. Um, I, I pretty much have to bring it to every 
rock band kid performance because somebody wants to play it. <laughs> so, um, if I was going to set this channel maybe a little bit more specific for this guitar, I'm trying to kind of darken it down a little bit here. I'm gonna grab two of my other guitars, play through the exact same setting to see what you get. Grabbing a uh, customized Thunder Strat with a Seymour Duncan One Stay Scuffle Coil. This uh, mod was also done by the same guy, Chris Hart, Hart Handcrafted. Um, same setting, this is what it sounds like. It definitely sounds smoother. It doesn't have that rasp. I don't know what it is about the Hello Kitty guitar that has that kind of character. I don't remember what the original pickup sounded like, so it could be part of the, the, the character of the pickup that Chris created. Let's try one more guitar. So this is a, a customized, highly customized um, Godin Telecaster. It's got Tom Anderson pickups, which I think are the most sublime pickups around. So. Curious what differences you hear. One of the questions is how much does the pickup make a difference? How much does the uh, amp make a difference? So let me do this real fast using my amazing roadie tuner. It's great for absent-minded people who want to think about other stuff while they're tuning. I almost have a sense when I'm playing through. Um, the Hello Kitty, like say, compared to this, it, the, the strings are almost fighting each other for space in the distortion spectrum. And that, I don't know if that makes any sense from a sound physics standpoint, but I kind of feel like this guitar just seems smoother. Like all the strings are working together more. And that could be the Tom Anderson pickups, not sure. you have, I mean, you know, the, the, the gag with the, the Hello Kitty is just kind of the surprise factor. Um, people don't really expect you to be playing it when playing Guns N' Roses or Crobot or Judas Priest. But um, every guitar does have its own character too, aside from the appearance, and so like you pull the guitar in the studio or at a gig that you think is going to give you a certain character for something more rootsy and raw. I think it's, uh, hilariously the Hello Kitty is a really great sounding guitar. Um, if I was going to do like a Santana solo, I would definitely would use this one. You know. Because it's a more sublime sound. Um. So hey, thanks for checking out this kind of fun, informal um, gear video in introducing you to my Hello Kitty guitar. Uh, I may do a video in a bit where I show off all my kind of more unusual instruments all at once, so look for that one, and thanks for checking out this channel.